Good morning, boys and girls. I am glad that you are with me here at the pool. I have to tell you, it has been a busy morning. I'm recording this on a Saturday afternoon on the church workday. And I have to tell you, it has been so cool around here. Uh, they've put new grass in at the playground. They have trimmed up bushes. They've replanted flowers. They've scraped the, the railings so that they can be repainted. The coolers have been prepared so that when it gets a little bit warmer outside that we can have uh, cool air in the buildings. Some closets have been cleaned out and reorganized. The kitchen's been worked on. So much has, it, has happened around here. And the really cool thing is about 40, 45 people showed up to help do all of this. And it was people using their unique gifts and talents to come together to do all of this work to make the church look better. But you know, the interesting thing about the church is the church is not the building. It really isn't. We call this building Redlands Community Church and we think of it as Redlands Community Church, but the church really is the people that belong to Jesus that come to what we call Redlands Community Church. And God has given each of those people that come to Redlands Community Church, that belong to Him, He's given them gifts. And that is what we are going to talk about today. So what I want you to do is to grab your Bible, and we are going to be in 1 Corinthians. And with your Bible in hand, let's take a few minutes to pray. And after we're done praying, I will help you try to find 1 Corinthians. So let's pray. Lord God, we do thank you for this day. We thank you that we can come together and that we can learn about you. And we can talk about the wonderful gifts that you give to your church. And that, Lord, we just thank you. We, we thank you that, that you give gifts to us. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, so who's the church? We are the church. And so the church isn't a building, it's a collection of people. And, and they're a collection of people that have experienced the great gift that God has given them. The greatest gift that God gives to each of us is salvation. The relationship with Him through His Son, Jesus. And so if you have trusted Jesus for the forgiveness of your sins, if you believe that Jesus died on a cross and he rose again on the third day to pay the price for your sins, then you're a part of God's church. And so the greatest gift is God sending Jesus. Now, the other part of that is when Jesus went back up to heaven, he sent God the Spirit to be in each person that's believed in him, that's trusted him. And, and, and so we have the gift of God the Spirit. So we get the gift of salvation through God the Son. We get the gift of uh, God the Spirit. And when God the Spirit comes upon us, he gives us special gifts too. And those gifts are to be used to serve Jesus. All right, so 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Now remember, the Bible is divided up into two parts. Do you remember what those two parts are? The Old Testament and the New Testament. The Old Testament takes about the first two-thirds of the Bible. And the New Testament is that last third. It begins with... The stories of Jesus, the Gospels, the good news. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. So Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, and then Acts, Romans, 1 Corinthians. And that's where we're at today, 1 Corinthians. And, and so if you can find any of those books, then you know you're close to where we need to be. Ma say it with me. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Acts, Romans, 
1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians chapter 12. So big 12. And we're going to start in verse 4. Now, there are different kinds of gifts, but the same Spirit. There are different kinds of service, but the same Lord. There are different kinds of working, but the same God works all of them in all people. Now, to each one of us, the manifestation of the Spirit is given for the common good. That means the Spirit is given to each one of us to trust Jesus for the good of all of us. And God the Spirit helps us to serve God and to work with God and to accomplish things for the kingdom of God. Uh, continuing, it says... To one, there is given through the Spirit the message of wisdom. To another, the message of knowledge by the means of the same Spirit. To another, faith by the same Spirit. To another, gifts of healing by that one Spirit. To another, miraculous powers. To another, prophecy. To another, distinguishing between spirits. To another, speaking in different kinds of languages. To still another, the interpretation of languages. All these are the work of one and the same Spirit. And He gives them to each one just as the Spirit determines. He gives them to whoever He wants. And so each of us may have different gifts, which is a good thing. And we use those gifts for God's purposes. Now, what if I don't like the gift that God gives me? Maybe God calls me to tell people about Jesus. And I think, oh, I'm not very good at talking to, talking to people. I don't want to talk to people. I want, oh, I want the gift of mercy. I want to be able to be compassionate and nice to people. Or maybe I want the gift of hospitality where I welcome strangers into my home. Or maybe... Well, hmm, well, you know what? As God is giving the words for Paul to write in 1 Corinthians, he gives us an illustration. And he uses our bodies as that illustration. So listen to this. The body is one, though it's made up of many parts. What are some of the parts of the body? We have eyes and a nose. We have ears. We have shoulders, knees and toes. Knees and toes. Oh wait, that's a different song. Head, shoulders, knees and toes. Knees and toes. Head, shoulders, knees and toes. Knees and toes. Yeah, we, we, so the bodys it's made up of all sorts of different parts, isn't it? So it is with Christ. For we were all baptized by one spirit into one body, whether we were Jews or we were Gentiles, whether we were slaves or whether we were free, whether we're men or whether we're women, we were all given the one spirit. Now, the body is not made up of one part, but many. Listen to this. If the foot should say, because I'm not a hand, I do not belong to the body, it would not, for that reason, cease to be a part of the body. And if the ear should say, because I am not an eye, I do not belong to the body, it would not, for that reason, cease, stop being a part of the body, would it? Now think about this. If the whole body were an eye, where would the sense of hearing be? If the whole body were an ear, where would our sense of smell be? As it is, there are many parts, but one body. The eye cannot say to the hand, I don't need you. And the head cannot say to the feet, I don't need you. On the contrary, those parts of the body that seem to be weaker 
are indispensable. They're, they're important. And the parts that we think are less honorable, we treat with special honor. And then verse 27, now you are the body of Christ and each one of you is a part of it. So think about that for a minute. We, we all have special gifts that have come to us through God the Spirit and they're to be used for the body of Christ, for the church. And so if, if I didn't like my gift, could, could, I, could I say, oh, I'm going to stop being a part of the body? No. If I didn't like somebody else's gift, can I say, oh, no, because you don't have the same gift as me. Because God didn't make you to be a preacher and teacher, then you're not as good as me. Is that going to be true? No. For instance, if I was the eye, could I go and tell the ear you can't be a part of the body? I, I take my ear the very same places I take my eyes, don't I? Because it's all one body. And can I remove my head and still go around? No, because a, a, a headless Pastor Charles is a dead Pastor Charles, isn't it? I need the head. And I need the eye. And I need the ear. And the body of Christ, it needs all of those gifts that God has given us. God gives those gifts for His purpose. There's a really cool verse in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10. It says, here, let me, let me just flip over there real quick. Uh, because it's, it, I want to get it just right because it's, it's such a great verse. It talks about how we're all important to the church, how we're all important to one another, how we need to value one another. We may be different, and it may even be physical differences. Uh, some of us may have different color of skin. Some of us may be boys or girls. Some of us may speak different languages. We may not all speak English. But that doesn't make us less valuable to the church. Here's what it's, or to God. Here's what it says. For we are God's workmanship. Another way that that word could be translated is masterpiece. We are God's masterpiece created in Christ Jesus to do good works which God prepared in advance for us to do. God wants us to do good things for Him and for one another to show off that we are God's masterpiece. Have you ever been to an art museum? Or maybe you've even just been downtown here in Grand Junction, and you've had the opportunity to look at the art on the corner. Some of that art is really cool. And, and because of it, it's a masterpiece. It, it, it has special meaning. It's valuable. And we are God's masterpiece. That doesn't mean God's going to hang us up in a museum. But rather, God wants us to go about accomplishing His tasks for his purposes. All right. Let me let me illustrate it again this way, okay? What are some things that would be very difficult for you to do if you didn't have hands? Mm, how about eating or getting dressed or playing basketball? Uh, what are some things that are difficult to do without the help of others? Do, do any of you drive cars? Yeah, could you imagine, unless you live right next to the school, that it might not be easy to get to school if somebody didn't take you there? Uh, have you ever played baseball? Could you imagine being on a baseball team of one? Would that be fun? 
Would that be very easy to do? So this is um, a couple more examples of how God calls us to work together to accomplish God's purposes. You know, while I was at the church this morning, I was watching them put sod, put the grass out on the playground area. And they worked together to do that. Some were unloading the truck with the grass and handing it to other people that carried it to those that were laying it right where they wanted it to be. And yet another person was cutting it when it got to the end of the roll and there was leftovers. They were working together to accomplish a task. And so the next time you come to the church building... I want you to take a look at that playground and see how they work together to accomplish the task of getting the grass in place. Or think about maybe like when you come to Awana. Do all of us do the same thing at Awana? Well, no, we each have a different role. We have a different task. And it says we work together that we're able to accomplish a lot together. Just the way that God intended it to be. And when we work together, we are showing ourselves to be God's masterpiece. Created in Christ Jesus to do good works that God prepared in advance for us to do. So just as as in order for a body to run, it needs to all work together. The arms, the legs, the heart, the lungs, the eyes so too does the church work together best when we all do it together. Let's pray. Lord God, I just thank you that you have put so many wonderful people in my life that are a part of the church. And that, Lord, I even thank you for for these children that are listening to this video and, and, Lord, how they are a part of the church if they've trusted Jesus. And if they haven't trusted Jesus, I pray that they would. And and that we can work together here in Green Junction to accomplish your purposes. Or that we can be your masterpieces. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. I hope that you have a good day and a good week, and I will see you next week. And hopefully it won't be long before we can all be back together in church together.